Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I will be giving you guys some recommendations for when, if you like this movie or TV show, then you will like this book. But it also kind of goes the other way around. Let's just get into the video and I will show you guys four books and TV shows that I want to talk about. And movies, by the way. <laughs> Okay, I'm so excited for this video. I have found a couple of movies and TV shows that I felt had just some kind of a connection or the same vibe as these books that I'm gonna show to you guys. But like I said, it also goes the other way around. If you enjoyed these books, I am pretty confident that you will like these movies as well. So let me show you guys the first book that I want to recommend. I've been trying to do this for the fourth time. Let me show you guys the book that I want to recommend to you if you love this TV show, American Horror Story. I have to think about the title. This book though is less gory and horry, horry than uh, American Horror Story, but I do feel like the atmosphere and the very mysterious and a little bit like spooky, creepy vibe of American Horror Story is very comparable to the vibe in The Wicked Deep by Shea Earnshaw. Our main character is called, oh my god, I just looked it up, Penny, and she lives in this very small town, which is known to tourists, but also just the people in her town for a curse that has been going on for over two centuries. Back in the 1800s, I believe, there were three sisters who were being accused of witchery, and uh, they were drowned in the sea, like close to the town of Sparrow. As their revenge, they cursed the town Town and each summer three boys get kidnapped and they drown in the sea and then this summer that we follow a really strange boy called Bo Carter arrives into town and he acts as if he doesn't know anything about the curse that is on Sparrow and Penny doesn't really trust him and it is very mysterious and kind of creepy and I really quite like this one it is a very atmospheric read I really liked the setting Penny lived on this like remote island a little bit off the coast of the town of Sparrow which had a very creepy kind of spooky vibe to it a very isolated and I love that one I don't know which season of American Horror Story you can really compare this book to because in American Horror Story every season has a different story which is really great you do not need to watch all of the seasons but I feel like this book just has some twists and some turns and the creepy vibes that American Horror Story can have as well okay a movie if you liked Bohemian Rhapsody, the movie about Queen, about the band, and how their life went when they became a band and how their personal relationships with each other were, I think that you would enjoy Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid as well. This had so many things in common with um, the movie and with the band. In this story, we follow Daisy Jones, <laughs> whoa, surprise, and a band called the Six. So the Six was already a band before Daisy Jones joined them, but this story is told through like an interview style type of way. So Daisy Jones and the Six eventually came together as a band and they broke up, but no one ever really knew why and in this story we follow that. At first I thought that this was a non-fiction story, it just sounded so realistic, but it is fiction. It didn't happen. It also takes place during the 70s, so it kind of uh, made me feel like I was reading the story of Queen or, you know, the Beatles or the Rolling Stones, while well, those guys are a little older. It's just all about their rock and roll drug band performing lifestyle. It was super entertaining, it was really emotional, just really a gem of a story in my opinion. I adore this this book with my whole heart and I actually really want to reread it again because I have forgotten so many of the details. I just know that the characters are in my heart. It is just beautiful and look at this cool hardcover though. It has concert tickets in the front. Just read it. <laughs> a series uh, that has taken over my heart. I watched the first season during my vacation to Greece last summer and then season two came out last month and I binged watched it in like three days even though I had a really important exam coming up and that is sex education. This show is perfection and I think that everyone needs to watch it. It doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl or what kind of sexuality you have. A lot of the things are represented in this story. We follow Otis and his mother is a sex and relationship therapist uh, but he has never really kissed a girl I believe even but he's definitely never had sex 
with a girl. It's really funny though because at school he's giving advice to people who have a lot of questions about sex and love and stuff like that but we follow also a lot of other characters and it deals with so much more than just sex advice and uh, British banter. Oh my god that was so bad. British banter. It has so much more than just that. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. You have amazing amazing diverse characters with different sexualities and a lot of very hard breaking backstories. It also deals with feminism and friendships. It just intertwines all these informational difficult things with a lot of humor and a series, a duology that does exactly the same. It deals with important topics but has a lot of humor. It is the exact opposite of OK by Laura Stephen and the sequel A Girl Called Shameless. I have the first book in this duology in my dorm so I don't have it here with me but every time that I have an opportunity to talk about these books I will take it and I will push it in your face. <laughs> so the exact opposite of okay is a story revolved around Izzy and Izzy hooks up with two guys in one night and one of these instances is being I believe photographed and put up on a website by someone we don't know who but Izzy gets slut shamed to hell. It is insane. She talks about females, she talks about sex, she talks about females wanting sex, that you're not a slut if you want to, and that she's definitely not a slut for sleeping with two guys on the same day. And she's trying to find out together with her best friend who put those photos on a website and it is becoming just, I believe even an international, but definitely a national scandal. I have never read a book that made me laugh as much as this duology. It is insane. I won't tell you guys anything about the second book because spoilers for the first one. That just makes these books so very special to me. There's definitely one joke in the first book that is really offensive in my opinion so I don't like that one but the story overall is still just so good. It has great friendships in here. Uh, I also love that Izzy our main character is being um how do you say that? Her grandma raises her, that's what I wanted to say, and her grandma is the best woman on this planet and she has a dog called Dumbledore which is also amazing. And if you like these books definitely check out Sex Education and even if you just like other books as well just check out Sex Education because it is so good. Last but definitely not least a movie that took my heart by surprise. I saw the trailer randomly, I stumbled upon it, and it sounded like something right up my alley. It is kind of a Cluedo, like a murder mystery movie. I hope you've heard of it, I hope you've watched it, and if not, do so as quickly as it is on any streaming surface, and that is Knives Out. This cast also is just insane. I don't remember the name of the old man who was killed in the story, but the old guy <laughs> who was killed was so famous for his murder mystery novels and um, he also really liked playing games but he is found dead in his estate. You are trying to find out who murdered him. All these suspects, his family, are being interviewed and it was filmed in such an entertaining way. I love the comedy in this one. They just brought it across so very well. I was constantly on the edge of my seat and the book that I'm recommending in combination with this movie is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is the first book in a trilogy. The second book is The Vanishing Stare and I also have the third book because it just came out. Oh my god. And the third book is The Hand on the Wall. I need to read this last book in this trilogy. This series until so far is one of my favorite series ever. So Albert Ellingham started or created his own boarding school back in like the 1930s which is called Ellingham Academy and shortly after after the academy opened, his wife and his daughter got kidnapped and this is one of the greatest mysteries in America or Vermont. Is that America? Or Canada. I'm European guys. I come from the Netherlands. My geography is not that great so I will put it on the screen where Vermont is. I think America? <laughs> it was very mysterious and the only thing that was left behind was this mocking riddle left behind by someone who called him or herself truly devious. Only like years and years later in the now uh, Stevie Bell is going to attend Ellingham Academy. This is like a private school and you can kind of choose your own path in studying whatever you like. So Stevie Bell she wants to become 
one of the best detectives ever, and she is trying to solve the Ellingham Academy mystery. That is one of her priorities. So she wants to solve this mystery. She also gets to know a lot of her, like, not really classmates, but like her other students who are attending this boarding school. Everything seems to go fine until someone is murdered and truly devious has made a return. So we follow two different perspectives, which I absolutely adored. You follow the perspective of Albert Ellingham and when this kidnapping of his wife and daughter happened back in the 1930s, which I loved so incredibly much. I like that kind of era. And then especially with the mystery involved as well, it just creates this very atmospheric breed, this very atmospheric place. And I also love the boarding school aspect. The only like downside that I would say about this trilogy is that there are a lot of characters. So in the beginning, you definitely need to kind of write down who is who. And I'm really sad that I read the first two books back after another and I had to wait another year for this one because I know for sure that I don't remember a lot of the details anymore. So I need to read a really good recap and then I will finally uh, find out what is going on. It is just such a good series, guys. These are all the stories that I wanted to recommend to you. I hope that you will definitely either watch one of the movies slash series or read any of the books that I recommended to you guys. I love them all so much. Oh, also, by the way, very soon there is coming a very special 5K subscribe five year booktube anniversary video because that happened and just thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers but definitely for all the people who are supporting me and who are kind of part of my little community if I can say it like that thank you so so much so if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below you guys can also follow me on all of my different social media pages I recently made a twitter holy crap at Sabine's book nook follow me but I also have goodreads snapchat instagram plus an email address links to those are also in the description bar down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!